Hi all, RetroTech Chris here again. Recently I watched a video where my friend Retro Eric repaired a EuroPC2 and upgraded the BIOS on an XT IDE card. In case you haven't seen it before, here's my XTCF Mini, and this is by Monotech. It's a very nice card, very configurable as well. And here you can see me installing it in a ISA2 Plus adapter and putting it in my Tandy 1000 HX. It fits very nicely in there, as you can see, and we'll go ahead and close the cover. So the first thing I need to do is download a version of the XT IDE Universal BIOS that will take advantage of the NEC V20 that I have put in my 1000HX. So we can go here and see that there are a variety of different binaries to download, but which one do we need? It's not 100% apparent to me. So what I went ahead and did is go back and actually look at the source code, and namely what we're going to do is look at the make file that's used to build the source where all of the different configuration options are. So the first thing that I did in this make file was search for V20. And we can see that uses a use 186 flag. So we can then search on that and that aligns with XT plus, cool. So searching for that, we can see some different options as well, which this aligns with a defs XT plus. And finally searching on that, what we find is we want this XTP.bin file. So whichever file ends in that, is the one we're going to want to use for this particular unit. So I'll go ahead and navigate back here, as you can see here, and we can click back on the pre-built binaries page, and lo and behold, I will download the IDE underscore XTP dot bin file and the config utility as well, since we will need that too. Now it's time to upgrade the BIOS, but first let's find out what we have today. We have an XT version from 2019, and we're going to go to an XT plus version. Let's go ahead and get a benchmark of this XT version. So after we boot up here, I ran a check it test and you can see the settings here. We will save these for comparison later after we flash the card. At this point, it's time to run the configuration utility and actually flash the card. So we can go ahead and load the BIOS from file and choose that file that we downloaded earlier. And then from there, we can go ahead and just flash the EEPROM, piece of cake. So we can start flashing with everything set, but of course we do need to set the EEPROM address first since mine is non-standard. And we can go up here and start flashing. And we get an error. What's up with this? Well, it was a bit of a head scratcher for me. Then I realized I pulled the card out of the system and I needed to disable the write protect on the ROM. So flipping that little switch over and now we are set. So let's try this again, put in that EEPROM address and now we can go start flashing. And lo and behold, now it works, great. Piece of cake, easy peasy. I'm sure we'll have no problems at all. It's time to restart the machine. Let's go ahead and do a restart. And now if we have a look, we will see that we are now using an XT Plus version and it is 2021-1005. Great, nice new version of the software. So the system's gonna go ahead and boot and we're gonna be all set. <laughs> Well, that didn't work out, so it's recovery time. I tried a couple of things to recover this. As you can see, all of the data is still there if we boot from a boot disk, so I went ahead and retransferred the system files and tried to fix the master boot record and booted again and still, well, nothing. Missing operating system. So I went ahead and created some new partitions and logical drives. I do try to split these up a little bit because this 245 megabyte SD card is massive and I don't want the directory listings to take forever. So I created some logical drives, created a main drive. We can now format that. So that's what you see me doing here. I went ahead and formatted the other two as well. And we are now doing a sysc colon to transfer system to drive C. Let's do a reboot now. And yes, things are working. I must have had an incompatible setup. It's okay. So next what I'm gonna do is load up land manager and map to my Raspberry Pi. And we're gonna go ahead and restore all the data that was on the Tandy. Yes, I do back up the data even on my retro systems. So from there, we can go ahead and copy over the files.zip file that you see here for drive C, which sometime later we'll finish. I'll copy it to drive D. Then we can run pk unzip D and go ahead and unzip that to drive C to restore it. And sometime later that will finish. Perfect. I also did something similar for the other drives. So now we can boot up and what do we see? We're going to see, once again, my classic DOS boot menu. Perfect. 
We can go ahead and boot with Land Manager so that we can perform some other operations if desired, but this is great stuff. Cool. So at this point, I wanted to grab the Check It configuration that was on the other SD card. It is still readable as we know, so I popped it into my SD card reader. After several tries, got Windows 10 to see it. And here we can see those benchmarks that we saved in Check It are in this checkit.cnf file. So I dragged it over to the Tandy, reran the benchmark, and now we can compare. And look at that. We are now 1.96 times faster than what we were. Isn't this great? This gets my check of approval.